name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this Vigil Mass marking the fourth Sunday of Lent. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have taken the shame of Egypt away from you. The Israelites pitched their camp at Gilgal, and kept the Passover there on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plain of Jericho. On the morrow of the Passover, they tasted the produce of that country, unleavened bread and roasted ears of corn, that same day. From that time, from their first eating of the produce of that country, the manna stopped falling. And having manna no longer, the Israelites fed from that year onwards on what the land of Canaan yielded. This is the word of the Lord.
Second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new one is here. It is all God's work. It was, called, it was God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the work of handing on his reconciliation. In other words, God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself, not holding men's faults against them. And he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. So we are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing, it is as though God were appearing through us. And the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. The word of the Lord. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. A man had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine, and now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants who put him on his farm to feed the pigs. And he would willingly have filled his belly with the husks the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want? And here am I dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we have been fattening and kill it. We are going to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and has come back. 
to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, the elder son was out in the fields and on his way back, as he drew near the house, he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servant, and your father has killed the calf we had fattened because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry then and refused to go in, and his father came out to plead with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you and never once disobeyed your orders. Yet you never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you kill the calf we had been fattening. The father said, my son, you are with me always and all I have is yours. But it is only right we should celebrate and rejoice because your brother here was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is now found. The Gospel of the Lord. I think it's safe to say that pretty well everyone here in the congregation this evening knows that parable and knows it as the parable of the prodigal son. Mind you, I have heard a few other titles given to that parable over the years. The parable of the forgiving father, the parable of the unforgiving brother, and maybe the cleverest of all, the parable of the missing mother. I've also heard it said that it is the best story that was ever written. No story tells us more about God or makes us feel better about ourselves. It's a short story with enormous scope, with the wildest possible diameter, in that it embraces our sinfulness at one end and God's forgiveness at the other. What prompted our Lord to tell that parable? The fact that the Pharisees objected to the company he kept, to his eating with sinners. So he tells the story to give an insight into his own mind and the mind of God. The story itself, the parable itself, falls into three parts. The first part is about the younger son, a lad who wanted his inheritance now, couldn't wait for his father to die, greedy fingers, itchy feet, and a sensual nature. Live it up and to hell with the commandments. A life based on self-indulgence, doing what you feel like doing. Not an unfamiliar story in any generation, including our own. So you might as well live. Life is too short. As long as you're enjoying yourself, as long as you're happy. Yo-ho. But the happiness ran out, and Luke tells us the younger son came to his senses. He was really repentant. He said, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired men. The second part of the parable is about the father. The gospel tells us, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. Still a long way off a dot on the horizon. Does that not mean the father was on the lookout for him, 
from the day he left, watching, waiting, and praying, like many a father and like many a mother. Does not show how God the Father feels about each one of us, how much every one of us matters to him, how anxious he is that we'll come back to him. And the Father didn't just wait for the Son. He ran. He ran out to meet him. Some people feel we should call this story the prodigal father. How many people, fear not, I'm not expecting you to answer, but how many people here tonight actually know what the word prodigal means? I ask that question because we were asked that question when we were tra training for the priesthood and not one of us in our class, and there were 15 or 16 of us, not one of us knew what the word prodigal meant. To be prodigal means to be wasteful, to be lavish in our use of things. Well, the Father certainly threw his forgiveness around, not in a reproving or a begrudging way, but in an explosion of sheer generosity and joy. Kill the calf, we're going to have a feast. The son is alive. The third part of the parable concerns the older son, and gosh, was he angry. He just couldn't enter the mood of the party at all. He wouldn't even go in. Yes, his attitude is understandable, and he is treated with some degree of sympathy. But his attitude helps illustrate how much more forgiving God is than we are, and how inclusive and how all-embracing God's love is. It includes the two of them, the rock and the rover. It's good to be reminded that there is no limit to God's forgiveness and our own repentance is not just a condition of his forgiveness, but a source of infinite joy. Anyone who thinks God does not love them, that he doesn't want us to turn away from our sins, you haven't been listening. That parable of the prodigal son reminds me of a priest I used to go to for confession when I was maybe in my 20s. Father Kevin Donnelly, who was a priest in Belfast. And any time you went into confession to Father Donnelly, you'd begin, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And Father Donnelly would always say, oh, son, you're okay. God's forgiven you. You're okay. God loves you. God has forgiven you. And the same applies to all of us gathered here in St. John the Baptist tonight. God is waiting for all of us to come back to him. That's all we have to do, to have the humility to recognize that we have sinned and that we want to return to God. And he's waiting there with open arms, waiting to welcome us with an embrace. This season of Lent is an opportune time to avail of the sacrament of confession, to experience God's mercy joy and forgiveness. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. As we continue on our Lenten journey, we present now our various needs and intentions to God our Father.
for all of us gathered here this evening, that we may hear and heed the invitation to a new way of living during these weeks of Lent. Lord, hear us. For Pope Francis, we pray that God may continue to fill him with the wisdom of Solomon in his ministry as servant of the servants of God. Lord, hear us. We pray for peace, especially for peace in Ukraine. We pray too that God may protect all the refugees fleeing their native land, especially the elderly, the women, and the children. And with all the prayers being prayed across the globe, coupled with international goodwill, peace may once again be restored to Ukraine's borders. Lord, hear us. For those who are no longer young, we pray that our elderly may always be respected and cherished, and that the wisdom of their years may be valued and appreciated. Lord, hear us. For those couples trying to have a baby, that their hopes, dreams, and prayers of a little infant child may become a reality. Lord, hear us. On this, the eve of Mother's Day, we pray in thanksgiving for all our mothers. We pray God's choicest blessings on those mothers still living, and we pray God's infinite mercy on all those mothers who have gone to God. Lord, hear us. For those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, we pray that they will find comfort in their sadness, certainty in their doubt, and courage in their loneliness. Lord, hear us. And for all those who are suffering the consequences of the current coronavirus pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. Lord, hear us. For those preparing for Christian marriage, we pray that God will bless all their preparations and those couples, and we pray too that we may always give good, solid witness to the sacrament of marriage. Lord, hear us. For those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. We remember this evening Ralph McNally, Agnes McCann, Peter James McCann, James Marley, Seguito Clavier Pereira Saldana, all of whose anniversaries occur today. We pray also for Helen Dolan and Antonio da Costa, both of whose months' minds occurred this weekend. We pray also for Noel Toland, Jimmy Conley, and Bridie Conlon, all of whose anniversaries occurred this weekend. And we continue to keep in our prayers those who have died of recent weeks, praying especially for Lara Morgan, Anne Walters, Patricia Pat McVeigh, Bridie Comack, and Jordy Creaney. We pray God will be merciful in his judgment and grant these deceased and all our own deceased loved ones an eternal repose. Lord, hear us. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. May everything we do begin with your inspiration, continue with your help, and reach perfection under your guidance, through Christ our Lord. I need to highlight a few items in this weekend's bulletin. I first want to express thanks to all those who contributed to last weekend's offertory collection, which amounted to just over £1,254, with a standing order amount for the month standing at £907. Parishioners, 
may leave their weekly envelopes in the boxes located at the entrance and next to the both parish churches, or if they prefer, they may leave their weekly envelopes through the letterbox of the parish office or through the letterbox of either parochial house. We had a lovely and um, prayerful ceremony, liturgy here yesterday afternoon at four o'clock, consecrating um, Ukraine and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in union with our Holy Father, Pope Francis in Rome, and in union with parishes throughout the world at that time. That was the prayer end of things. This weekend, at all masses in the parish, there'll be a special collection for Ukraine. The monies lifted will be directed to Caritas Internationales, which is the helping hand of the Catholic Church on the ground in Ukraine and the surrounding region. Please be as generous as possible. The Stations of the Cross will be prayed each Sunday evening during Lent here in St. John the Baptist Church at 6 p.m. And the Knights of Columbanus are running with their Fish on Friday Lenten initiative, which is quiet nourishment for the soul, details of which are in this weekend's bulletin. Also in the bulletin this weekend is a wee item about Drummontine retreats. The full schedule of retreats can be found on the leaflets at the back of both Barry's chapels. Um, some, of, some of these retreats, most if not all of them, are very, very good. Being led by Father Hugh Lagan, who is a qualified clinical charter, clinical psychologist from Maharan, County Derry, a delightful man. And uh, another little item there, Archbishop Eamon of our own diocese, has moved the Chrism Mass to the Wednesday evening of Holy Week in St. Patrick's Cathedral, Armagh at 7 p.m. All are welcome. And this year, the diocese will be highlighting the ongoing synodal process and also um, the work of the diocesan synodal core group. Parishioners are all warmly invited to that Mass on Spy Wednesday, particularly uh, the confirmation, children of the confirmation classes and their parents are all encouraged to attend that Mass in the cathedral. Father Clark, as you are aware, is still off and will be off for the next few weeks. And so on that account, there will be a reduced Mass schedule. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through it all. But the details of it are in the bulletin uh, this weekend. And it's just an inevitable consequence of his not being available. And last but not least, remember that the clocks go forward by one hour tonight. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them 
and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Eamon, our Bishop Michael, his assistant Bishop Sean, our retired bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, all the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Mission is Hanana, her free Marvun or Slani for doing a Yanu. Our Nahar, a Tar Nyau, Dimi for Danyam, Gadaba de Reith, Ganyanta de Hiller and Talu, Marenyi Hiller Nyo, our Naron Lehul Turduin in you, August Mau doing our vehicle, Marawahi Majinis our vehicle in the Fien, August Nalikshin Agahu, Ach Sirshin O Ulk. Deliver us, Lord. We pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary. And for protection tonight for ourselves and also for the people of Ukraine. O angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits thee here, ever this night be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. I'd just like to share with you before the final blessing, I happened to notice it uh, in the sacristy. I was looking up one of my apps on my phone, Universalis, about why does a priest wear uh, pink vestments on the fourth Sunday of Lent and on the third Sunday of Advent. So, Universalis tells us that rose is a lighter version of violet because today the penitential violet is mixed with the white of the approaching festival, namely Easter. It is part of human nature that we cannot go on being penitent for a long time or we sink into a settled and insincere gloom rather than working at the definite and active spiritual exercise called penance. The church knows human nature, and both in Advent and Lent, there is a moment where the atmosphere of penance and preparation is brightened by a shaft of light from the glorious season, season we are preparing ourselves for. The third Sunday of Advent tells us, Gaudete, rejoice, because the Lord is near and the fourth Sunday of Lent says, Letare Jerusalem, be joyful Jerusalem, and all who love her, because she herself is loved by the Lord. On Gaudete and Letare Sundays, therefore, the dark penitential purple may be lightened to what the documents call rose, but most lay men and lay women would call pink. So that's free of charge, that extra piece of information. I didn't know it myself. The Lord be with you. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfeeling light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. <laughs>